batting sixth, the designated hitter, number 16, Lauren Duggan. Batting seventh, at second base, number five, Brittany Duclos. Batting eighth, the catcher, number nine, Jacqueline Dubois. And batting ninth, at third base, number eight, Lexi Gifford. And on the mound for UConn, number 24, Kiki Severiano. And the manager for UConn is Karen Mullins. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the starting lineup for your Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Leading off in right field, number 77, Lauren Williams. Batting second, in left field, number six, Chandler Howard. Batting third, in center field, number 14, Jackie Bates. Batting cleanup at first base, number 20, Alexis Durando. Batting fifth, the third baseman, number 13, Jordan Whitley. Batting sixth, the designated hitter, number 15, Ashley Alton. Batting seventh, at second base, number seven, Jenny Harabedian. Batting eighth, the shortstop, number two, Ashley Bragg. And batting ninth, the catcher, number 22, Casey Madden. And the pitcher for Rutgers on the hill for the Scarlet Knights, number nine, Dresden Maddox. And the manager for your Rutgers Scarlet Knights is Jay Nelson. Ladies and gentlemen, let's play ball. Welcome back to game two at the RU Softball Complex in Piscataway, New Jersey. Danny Breslauer here with you on our vision presented by AT&T. The Yukon Huskies now 13 and 11. 1-0 in the Big East, Rutgers falls to 16-12, 1-3 in the conference by way of a 4-0 UConn win in game one of our doubleheader here. On the Livingston campus, the backdrop, the new dorms as part of the construction projects on this campus. UConn goes to 13-11 by way of the 4-0 win. Kiki. Safriano, the complete game nine hitter. We'll get into that in a bit, as she'll actually return for game two, as UConn will go without any changes to their lineup or pitcher in game two. Rutgers will have a couple of changes, including the starting pitcher, and that is Dresden Maddox, the freshman from Kennesaw, Georgia, who on Wednesday threw a complete game five hitter to defeat Hartford in game two. Maddie Schiappa to lead off, again, first pitch swinging, just like game one. Whitley, not in time. An infield single for Schiappa to lead things off here the in stop. the first. Number seven. Check that, Emily they'll make that an error. As the ball hit Whitley in the glove. So an E5 to start things for the Scarlet Knights. And Emily O'Donnell had a couple of big hits in game one in the sixth and seventh inning, including the hit to start the sixth inning rally for UConn that was four runs on five hits after Alyssa Landreth had allowed just one hit through five innings. Dresden Maddox ahead, 0-1 to Emily O'Donnell, who went two for three with a sack bunt in game one, and now 1-1 one one to the UConn Huskies sophomore shortstop from New York. Dresden Maddox, seven innings, five hits, five Ks, two walks on Wednesday against Hartford. Deal strike two at the knees. The freshman is five and one, a 2.38 ERA. Her 13th appearance today and eighth start. She has four complete games and three shutouts. And Maddox is one, two. Toward Whitley again off her glove. So back to back tough plays for Whitley at third. This will be Certainly another question for the official scorer as to which way they go on that. But both Schiappa and O'Donnell reach with consecutive hard hit balls toward Whitley at third. And it brings up Kim Silva. 
Still no ruling on the hit there from O'Donnell. Squaring to bunt is Silva. Whitley fields, fires, and Harabedian coming on the rotation play to make the out at first. So Silva, the UConn leading hitter, as the sack bunt go 5-4 as it's put out at first base. And Schiappa moves on to third, O'Donnell to second, and UConn, which did not score till the sixth inning of game one, after being one hit through five, already has second and third, and one out here in inning one. It was back-to-back -back E5s officially on Jordan Whitley to start the game on Chiapa and O'Donnell. Dresden Maddox deals high to Marissa Gutches. Gutches went 0 for 3 with a walk in game one. So it was the final out in the sixth inning before the four straight hits that led to UConn's four runs. Gutches swings through an all-speed pitch from Maddox. Count even at one. Dresden Maddox has been an outstanding, not surprise for Rutgers, but they knew she'd be a big time pitcher as a freshman. But I'm not sure how quickly they expected her to contribute and she has done just that. Good block by the senior Madden behind the plate. Maddox threw to her fellow freshman Liz Adams on Wednesday. Jay Nelson opting to go with Casey Madden here again in game two, back to back starts in this double header which UConn took game one of for nothing. Maddox is 2-1, Gutches toward left, and UConn will lead in the first. Scoring is Schiappa, stopping at third will be O'Donnell, and that scoots by Madden and she'll score. It'll come on an error via the throw from left field, and advancing to second on the play as well as Gutches, who will have an RBI single, and UConn leads 2-0. Number 10, Andre Fernell. So O'Donnell scores on the error, Schiappa on the single. One RBI for Gutches, two runs score, and immediately Jay Nelson will go out to talk to his freshman pitcher, Dresden Maddox. And after four UConn hitters here in the top of the first of game two, and Karen Mullins, the 30th year head coach of UConn, will talk to her hitter and base runner, that would be Audrey Grinnell and Marissa Gutches. Huskies a two nothing lead on a hit and three errors. Dresden Maddox now will be tasked with recomposing. Landreth went five shutout in game one before UConn got it going and apparently that grew from the top of the sixth of game one is carried on to the first of game two. Strike one to Audrey Grinnell, who had the game-winning hit in game one, an RBI double that scored Emily O'Donnell. Two-nothing UConn, top one of game two of our doubleheader. Huskies a four-nothing winner over Rutgers in game one. The count evens at one. O'Donnell two for four with a run, including three assists from shortstop in game one. 274 hitter on the year, home run 11 RBI, swings through that. Count is one and two, just one away on a sack bunt by Kim Silva. Two runners in, runner on second for UConn. And Grinnell will show bunt and then take a ball low. Dresden Maddox who has turned into option 1A in this pitching rotation behind Alyssa Landreth. Five and one, because the count runs full. Maddox defeated USF a week ago, a complete game five hitter, to give Rutgers its first win over USF in 18 tries. Maddox's 2.38 ERA just behind Landreth's at 1.92 coming into today. Nice catch in the stands uh, by one of the patrons here today on the foul ball from the UConn lefty Grinnell. Full count one out to get a look at 
the lucky recipient of the foul ball. That one fouled straight back by Grinnell. Nice hands. Two runs, one hit, three errors so far in this top of the first. Two by Jordan Whitley, one in left field by Chandler Howard. And Grinnell down swinging for Dresden Maddox's first strikeout of the day. Maddox in a big spot to settle down, picks up her 36th strikeout in 56 and two thirds innings of work. Brings up Lauren Duggan, the designated player for UConn. Duggan one for two in game one with a single and a run. Takes a strike on the outside corner. A sophomore from Norwood, Massachusetts. Kiki Savriano, who will go again in game two through a complete game nine hitter for UConn in game one, shutting out the Scarlet Knights. All speed pitch gets Maddox ahead 0 and two. Landreth returned the favor for Rutgers, a complete game seven hitter, but she gave up four runs and striking out six and walking three. Savriano struck out four, walked one in the shutout. The 0-2 just missed. Had some movement going away. Chiapa and O'Donnell reached by E5 to start this first. And after a sack bunt, they both scored on a single and an error from the left fielder. Foul tip. Duggan stays alive. UConn won game one over Rutgers 4-0 for their first Big East win of the year in their first attempt. UConn now 13-11, 1-0 in the conference. Rutgers, which had won 9-11 of 11 coming in, dropped to 16-12 and 1-3 and and in league. Check for the appeal on the check swing, and she did not go, 2-2. Two and two. Rutgers, which had been outscoring opponents 58 to 33 during that 11 game stretch, was shut out for nothing. After having a 12 nothing doubleheader, 5 nothing, 7 nothing against Hartford on Wednesday. Maddox now one strike away from getting out of this topsy turvy first inning with just those two runs on the board for the Huskies. Our game one moved considerably quicker with zeros across the board till the top of the sixth. And Maddox missing inside, full count. And that was when UConn broke out for four. All five hits. And that proved to be the difference. That was Alyssa Landreth, the sophomore for Rutgers pitching. Now it's the freshman Dresden Maddox. Her 3-2 pitch is driven to left. Howard going back makes a nice play over her shoulder. So Scarlet Knights, three errors. UConn, one hit. UConn, two runs. Huskies, two. Rutgers, nothing as they come to bat in the bottom of the first on our vision, presented by AT&T.
the sun no longer shining down in the RU softball complex as it gets a little bit cooler here on this Friday afternoon in Piscataway, New Jersey. Danny Breslauer with you on our vision presented by AT&T for Rutgers softball. Game two of the doubleheader. There are the three first inning errors for Rutgers. Two runs on just one hit for UConn as the Scarlet Knights come to bat in the bottom of the first after losing game one for nothing. They'll go with Lauren Williams to lead things off. Chandler Howard, Jackie Bates to follow against Kiki Savriano, who threw a complete game, scattering nine hits in game one. So deal ball one to start things. Savriano, the senior from Lexington, Massachusetts, who came back after sporting a 3.29 ERA her junior year and has been outstanding. As Williams fouls it off to even the count at one. Game one, seven innings pitch, nine hits. No runs allowed, four strikeouts and a walk for Savriano, who faced 30 batters. Lauren Williams takes strike two on a breaking ball. Rutgers leading hitter at 347 coming into the doubleheader today. Four home runs, 14 RBIs. It started all 29 games now in right field. 0 for 4 though in game one today and fouls that away. Remember today's proceedings part of strikeout cancer. You see the pink softball shaped placards on the side of the Rutgers dugout. It's a good look at them. Strikeout cancer, an outstanding cause. So again, if you're able, make sure you check into contributing. Lauren Williams, a long fly. And half of the deficit is back. Williams. Williams drives a deep home run to left field, her fifth of the year to lead Rutgers, and it's 2-1 UConn. Oh, you Rutgers went without a run all of game one, and their first batter of game two, Savriano, working her eighth Number inning of the day, Chandler gives up a hanger to Williams who drives it to left field and onto the construction hill out and left. Way gone for her fifth of the year. And Chandler Howard takes ball one high from Savriano. So immediately after UConn puts up two in the top of the first, Lauren Williams drives one way gone to left field to bring Rutgers within a run. Howard takes ball two. This is Williams who had a 505 slugging percentage coming into today and has shown power from the leadoff spot. Now Chandler Howard, 333 hitter, home run 16 RBIs on the year. Game one went one of three with a walk and takes strike two. Howard left-handed hitting left fielder. Made a nice play going back to the track to end the first inning on a line drive by Lauren Duggan. Severiano, breaking ball missed away. It's two and two. She wanted that call. She stared in for it. We're in game two of a doubleheader. The Big East home softball opener for Rutgers. Lost game one to UConn four nothing. After it was a 0-0 game to start the sixth. Howard drives it to left. This one dies a bit and settles into the glove of Schiappa for the first out of the inning. Rutgers lineup today goes Williams, Howard, Bates, Durando, Whitley, Alden, Harabedian, Bragg, and Madden. The only difference is Ashley Bragg dropping from the five spot to the eight spot in the lineup, and that moving Alden and Harabedian up a slot. Jackie Bates, the center fielder. Bows it back. Bates a one for four game one. Singled, struck out, flew out and grounded out. 280 hitter. Four home runs, 16 RBIs. Trailing only Lauren Williams in the home run department after her big fly just a, a moment ago. Remember to tune in to Rutgers men's lacrosse tomorrow night, 7 p.m. at your sack field. Are you in Providence? And a Big East contest, both looking for their first conference wins of the year. Bates fouls that off. Nice play in the on-deck circle by Durando. And then next week, we have three broadcasts in three days on the weekend. 
Rutgers baseball against Seton Hall Friday and Saturday. Three o'clock Friday, one o'clock Saturday. As Bates takes low for two and two with one out. Appeal, no dice on the check swing. And then Sunday, the seventh, will be Rutgers against Syracuse women's lacrosse at Yersack Field, this eight and two Scarlet Knights. Check ScarletKnights.com and the multimedia tab for more broadcast information. Bates pops that up towards short right, backing up the second baseman too close to make the play for the second out of the inning. UConn got two in the top of the first off of three Scarlet Knights errors. And a Marissa Gutches single. Number 20, Alexis Durando. Or you got one back right away on a Lauren Williams leadoff home run. That's where we stand. Bottom one, two outs. No one on for Alexis Durando, who swings through strike one from Kiki Savriano. The UConn ace went all seven of game one, giving up nine hits and shutting out Rutgers. Alyssa Landreth went complete for RU as well, but gave up four runs all in the sixth inning. And now Dresden Maddox gives up those pair of unearned runs in the first inning for the Scarlet Knights. Durando strikes out on three pitches. First K of game two for Savriano, who struck out the Scarlet Knights four times in game one. We played an inning of game two, UConn two, Rutgers one, on our vision presented by AT&T. Seven, eight, and nine for UConn. At the top of the second after they send six batters to the plate in the first with three errors from Rutgers, a sack bunt, and a single producing the damage of two runs. Rutgers answered with a leadoff home run at the bottom of the first. That's where we stand. Top two of game two. UConn leading the Scarlet Knights two to one after defeating Rutgers four to nothing in game one. Danny Breslauer with you at the RU Softball Complex in Piscataway, New Jersey. Thanks for tuning in to ScarletKnights.com today and our vision presented by AT&T. 20 spring games between today and May 12th, the end of our broadcast year, spanning five sports. Dresden Maddox deals to Brittany Duclos and she'll foul it off down the third baseline in play for Whitley to make the catch for the first out of the inning. So one down in the second. For the freshman Dresden Maddox, looking to work around two unearned runs in the first inning. Freshman catcher Jacqueline Dubois steps in for UConn. Dubois had an RBI single for the fourth and final run of UConn's six, and she fouls that off on a line down the left field line. Freshman from Mount Vernon, New Hampshire for a UConn team that split a midweek pair with Quinnipiac out of the NEC. That was an NEC finalist a year ago, losing to LIU Brooklyn out in Moon Township, Pennsylvania on the campus of Robert Morris. That one popped straight up behind home plate towards the Rutgers fans and into the stands for strike two. Coaching matchup, seventh year head coach for Rutgers, Jay Nelson, 30th year head coach for UConn is Karen Mullins. UConn looking to build on a nine and 13 Big East year from last season, 21 and 27. Rutgers looking for a fourth consecutive Big East tournament appearance. They went 26 and 28 and an identical nine and 13 in the Big East a year ago. Each of these teams losing Rutgers to Notre Dame and UConn to Louisville in the first round of the Big East championships. Oh, no, 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 no. 
Count stays at one and two after the foul ball by Dubois. UConn leads the all-time series after the game one of the doubleheader win. 44-24 and two. Rutgers had won the latest meeting prior to game one. That was April 3rd of 2011. Rutgers took the third and final game of a series in stores that day, 13 to seven. Count two and two between the freshman pitcher Dresden Maddox and the UConn freshman catcher Jacqueline Dubois. Rutgers down 2-1, top two of game two. That one away. Count runs full on Dubois. Single, a ground out, and a fly out in game one. And that just missed outside corner as even the catcher Dubois did a double take before making her way down to first. First walk issued by Dresden Maddox, her 40th in 57 innings. And UConn's first base runner of the second. They scored two of their three base runners in the first. Maddox deals low and in to Lexi Gifford, the third baseman. An 0 for 3 game one, striking out twice against Alyssa Landreth and flying out to center. Runner on first, one out. 1-0 one -oh count, top two. And that's a strike at the knees to even the count at one. Dresden Maddox, the RU pitcher out of Kennesaw, Georgia. Four-year varsity letter winner at Harrison High School. That one's fouled straight back. Won the Kennesaw State University Bobby Baylor Award for athletic excellence. The most impressive stat, though, coming out of her outstanding high school career was her ERA, cumulative of .7. Nine. The one two. Just missed away. Madden faked the snap throw. Weather has changed considerably from game one to game two. Had the sun out for the one o'clock start of game one. It was warm in the 50s. Wind has picked up, sun's gone, and it's colder here for game two. To third, on to second for one, and Whitley to Harabedian goes 5-4 on the fielder's choice put out. Du Bois retired. Gifford reaches on the fielder's choice to turn the lineup over with two outs in the second. The left fielder, Maddie Schiappa. And the left fielder, Schiappa, who had a leadoff single in the first inning of game one and had an E5 to lead off game two that she eventually scored on. Harabedian, good glove work. So Jenny Harabedian gets her hands on Two of those plays in the second inning. We played an inning and a half. It's UConn two, Rutgers one on our vision presented by AT&T. Kiki Savriano has pitched every inning for UConn today. So we head to the bottom of the second of game two here with the Huskies leading Rutgers two to one. UConn knocked off RU four nothing in game one as the Rutgers softball scoreboard at the RU softball complex shows three errors for Rutgers. UConn playing a clean game so far in game two. For 
Rutgers, 5, 6, and 7. Whitley, Alden, and Harabedian here in the second as Jordan Whitley fouls it away. If you're just joining us, Kiki Savriano threw a complete game nine hitter with four strikeouts and a walk in game one. As Whitley takes away to make it one and one. for the Scarlet Knights, all coming in the first inning that UConn got two runs in. Jordan Whitley, who had four hits in the doubleheader Wednesday against Hartford, swings through that to make it one and two. Rutgers did not go quietly in their part of the first. Lauren Williams led off with a home run before the Scarlet Knights did have two strikeouts and a pop out. But Savriano, who was able to master them at least in the form of not letting them cross the plate in game one, despite scattering nine hits across seven innings, relinquished her first run in eight innings of work. Whitley fouls that off. Rutgers one and three in the Big East. Brings them down the standings just a bit. Louisville still to play a conference game. Most would pick them to be the favorites in the conference. They're 26 and five on the year. Two runs, one hit, no errors for UConn. One run on one hit, three errors for the Scarlet Knights. We are in the bottom of the second of game two. UConn leading Rutgers two to one. And Whitley toward left center field, a base hit. Well, it split the gap. It goes off a diving left fielder, Schiappa. And Whitley, a sliding double. Jordan Whitley gets uh, Rutgers' second hit of game two. And much like game one, where Rutgers out hit UConn to the tune of nine to seven, despite losing four nothing. Out hitting the Huskies again while trailing two one. Ashley Alden, the designated player, steps in for the Scarlet Knights. Went 0 for 3 in game one with a pair of flyouts and a ground out. Has some power in that bat and takes ball one low. We'll return to the RU softball complex a couple more times this year. For Princeton on April 11th at 3.30, that a Thursday game. Alden ahead 2 and 0. And then again for the Final doubleheader of the year on May 4th, a Saturday against Pittsburgh at noon and 2 p.m. The 2-0 from Savriano, Alden, a good bunt. Savriano fields, throws, and holding the bag with a good stretch was due close. Sack bunt put out goes 1-4 as Savriano flung that over there. Whitley advances to third with the tying run. The and it brings up Jen Harabedian. Number seven, Jenny Harabedian. Harabedian a two for three day in game one. Pair of singles. Each time she was retired on a put out in between second and third. The first time, base running mistake where she was tagged out by the shortstop. The second time, shortstop flipping to third. The 1-0. Harabedian down the line, off the bag, it's fair. Whitley scores on Jen Harabedian's second RBI single of the week, and it's 2-2. Harabedian did the honors two, with the game-winning hit in game one of Wednesday's doubleheader. And there picks up RBI number four of the year for her on hit number 11, and her third of the day. It's Ashley Bragg down to the eighth spot in game two, fouls it off. As the five hitter in game one, Bragg went one for three with a single and a strikeout. As Rutgers has responded with a picket fence in the first and second to tie the game at two. And off and running from first, heads up play by Harabedian on the low pitch. Stolen base by Jen Harabedian. It's 
the first straight steal for Rutgers today. And a team that has been aggressive on the base paths this year. 32 of 44 for Rutgers now on the campaign. And for Jen Harabedian, she is two for two. The 1-1, one, one. away to Bragg. One out, bottom two, it's a 2-2 two -two game. Between Rutgers and UConn, Scarlet Knights trying to salvage a doubleheader split here in their home Big East opener. UConn would like to start 2-0 oh in conference. 2-1, Bragg towards Savriano, and she'll flip to first as Harabedian measuring will decide to go back to second. Initially took off and then retreated. Bragg retired 1-3 as Savriano did not even look Harabedian back. Number 22, Casey Madden. Senior catcher for Rutgers. The nine hitter comes up with two away in the second. Casey Madden, two for two in game one. Two singles and a sack bunt. Takes ball one. So the first signs of a crack in the armor here for Kiki Savriano after throwing a complete game shutout in game one. Given up two runs here in game two and missed inside with a breaking ball. Dresden Maddox for Rutgers gave up just two unearned runs in the first inning here in game two so far. Alyssa Landreth gave up four in the sixth of game one after throwing five one-hit innings of shutout ball. That proved the difference for a UConn 4-0 win. 3-0 leading the count for Casey Madden. That's a strike. Karen Mullins here today, the UConn head coach. One of 43 coaches in the 800 win club in NCAA softball. As Madden drives one to left, Schiappa has it measured. And that does it for the second. Rutgers collects a pair of hits and leaves a runner. We played two, Scarlet Knights two, UConn two on our vision presented by AT&T. Two runs on one hit, no errors for UConn. Scarlet Knights a pair of runs on three hits, but they've committed three errors, and that's the difference as UConn got two first inning runs off of those Scarlet Knights errors. And Rutgers responded with a home run by Lauren Williams and an RBI single from Jen Harabedian to tie things up at two. Here in game two of our doubleheader today between the two Big East opponents, the Scarlet Knights and the Huskies. UConn winning game one four nothing on Kiki Savriano's complete game shutout. As Dresden Maddox deals strike one to UConn's two hitter, Emily O'Donnell, 0 for one today, reached on an error and scored. Game one went two for three with a pair of singles. And Maddox deals low to O'Donnell. UConn has on deck one of the most dangerous sluggers in the Big East Conference, Kim Silva. Came in today with a 6-12 slugging percentage and a 3.88 average. The 1-1 one -one foul away. All week between these two double headers, that left field line hasn't been very kind to any team. Every time someone's been out in front, it hasn't been able to straighten out and stay fair. Lauren Williams took it into her own hands and kept it deep into the left center field gap for her home run. Maddox is 1-2. Missed a little low. Yeah. 
O'Donnell started all 48 games at shortstop a year ago. That off of Maddox. It'll be a base hit as it scoots into left field. Maddox appears to be okay. She caught that one on the thigh. On a cold day, that does not feel good. Jay Nelson will come out to talk to Dresden Maddox, make sure she's okay. It's UConn's second hit in three innings. The other coming from Marissa Gutches to score a run. Maddox will get a couple tosses to make sure everything's okay. Jay Nelson seems happy with what he saw. Maddox will tough it out and rein in the game. 2-2 score. UConn gets the leadoff runner on in both the first and the third now. And it's Kim Silva who had a sack bunt in the first. And Maddox to Silva, second time in three innings that the UConn three hitter will square to bunt and it's strike one. Silva's sack bunt went 5-4 on the put out in the first with Harabedian rotating over to cover first. And Silva takes a strike at the knees and Maddox is in front of the count 0-2. On first is O'Donnell after her leadoff single right up the middle off of Maddox. And now Silva towards short. Bragg to second for one, that's all they'll get. The fielder's choice, 6-4. Right Silva reaches, Marissa one out. Shows. And Gutches, who had the single to left field that led to Chandler Howard's error in the first inning that had Emily O'Donnell score. Schiappa had already scored on Gutches' single and Gutches pops it up. Madden will give it a look and it's foul. Game one of our doubleheader today started at 1 p.m. in sunny skies. And that'll hurt on a day like this. Off the hands from Gutches. And easy for Whitley for the second out. That sends a sting through your arms. And you heard Jen Meinheit, the former Rutgers outfielder here with us on Wednesday, tell you those do not feel good when you get your hands in on a cold day. And Audrey Grinnell will step in with a strikeout already for Maddox in the first inning. First baseman, Audrey Grinnell. Thanks for tuning in to ScarletKnights.com today and our vision presented by AT&T. Danny Breslauer here with you. Off and running from first, the throw down. Good scoop by Bragg, but not in time. And sliding under it is Silva. Stolen base for the Husky. And for Silva, the power hitter, her fourth stolen base in five attempts. 1-1 one, one now to Grinnell with Silva in scoring position. Make it one and two. Maddox hit the black on the outside. graduated their best stolen base person in Jen Ward a year ago who swiped 25 bags. Count two and two. Allie Adelman, Amy DeLuca, Amy Vaughn, Jen Ward, the graduates of that UConn team. The 2-2 two -two with two outs, fouled straight back again. And over, as our producer director, Colin Osborne, called it between games today. Not the Rutgers RV, the Rutgers Winnebago. We're okay with going with that. And that's upstairs, count is full. You see it in the backdrop there in your center field shot. 
There's a better look at the Scarlet Express. And that's ball four on the outside. Grinnell worked the count. And a no contact day for her so far. Strikeout and a walk. Designated hitter. She'll set up Lauren first and second, Duggan. two outs for Lauren Duggan, the designated player who lined out to left field and the first. 2-2, Ru Rutgers and UConn. UConn threatening here, top of the third. Game two of our doubleheader, Huskies took game one, four nothing, and Duggan put a charge into that foul. Scarlet Knights staff members in attendance down the left field line as well. Getting that ball sent into their area. Duggan check swing foul comes right over us. We had, we had one nearly take out our monitor in game one and that one maybe at 20 degrees warmer we go to try to catch it. Clearly Tim wants to make sure he knows that I'm 0 for 2 now. Is that what you're trying to say? 0 for 2. Lauren Duggan, 0 for 1 here in this game two. Takes ball one outside. Duggan went 1 for 2 in game one. Singled and scored in the big rally in the sixth that gave UConn its four runs. Walked and grounded out. Dresden Maddox, the Rutgers freshman, 1-2 from the circle. Dug in toward shortstop. Bragg has it, squeezes it to end the inning. UConn leaves two despite getting a walk of fielder's choice and a hit. We have played two and a half. Rutgers and UConn tied at two on our vision. Your attention please, ladies and gentlemen. Rutgers Softball is taking donations for their Strikeout Cancer Games on April 6th and 7th against Georgetown. For $5, you can fill out a paper softball and place it anywhere on the side of Rutgers' home dugout. Please join Rutgers and many other softball programs around the country in their efforts to strike out cancer. It becomes all Big East play on the weekends for Rutgers from here on out. Some midweek steps out of conference. Hofstra coming up, Princeton, Stony Brook, Iona, and Monmouth, and LIU, Lafayette. But on the weekends, it's all Big East from here. UConn, Georgetown, Villanova, Notre Dame, Syracuse, St. John's, and Pittsburgh for Rutgers prior to the Big East tournament, which begins May 9th. Savriano, ball one to the Scarlet Knights. Leadoff hitter, Lauren Williams. The lineup turns over bottom three. Rutgers and UConn tied at two. Williams, one for one here in game two with a leadoff home run for Rutgers in the first. It was her fifth of the year. She's now ahead two and oh. Williams really needed that. She went 0 for four in game one and had been struggling since the Wednesday doubleheader against Hartford. But a big fly way out to left field with the wind aiding her in the first inning. Another big swing, this one popped up towards second, going to be a tough play with the win for Duclos, who makes it for out number one. Seven inning regulation softball game. We played all seven in game one with UConn getting their four runs in the sixth and holding on to win four nothing. A game can end at five innings or six innings with an eight run rule. But again, a close game. Do not expect that today. Chandler Howard takes strike one outside corner. Howard 0 for 1 in game two with a fly out to left. Went 1 for 3 in game one with a single and a walk. Kiki Savriano has thrown all nine and a third innings for UConn today. Howard down the left field line. Schiappa makes the play going into the fence. It's a real tough play heading into the outside of the Rutgers dugout. Backhanded it as she 
tiptoed the fence. And a tough luck second out for Chandler Howard. Jackie Bates, the Rutgers three hitter and center fielder steps in. And she'll send one in the left center field gap. Off the wall, the base of the wall on a fly. Bates coming into second. She's hung up between first and second. And a run down for Bates who will get a single and then is tagged out as it will go seven, four, three for the put out to end the inning. So Rutgers goes down one, two, three despite the long drive by Bates. We have played three, two to two between Rutgers and UConn on our vision. Four hits for Rutgers and three errors. Too close again, fouls it away. Too close behind Owen Sue. get one and two as Maddox settled down after that first inning which saw the first two batters reach base by way of E5s. They both came around to score. After that Maddox despite a couple walks and a couple fielders choices has not had a blemish. Count is two and two. Too close Dubois Gifford due up for UConn. One game, one of this doubleheader, four nothing, to improve to 13 and 11, one and zero in the Big East. Too close toward Bragg, backhanded stop, throw across, stretch in time. Durando on the receiving end as Bragg with a nifty backhand and throw. And that retired too close for the first out of the fourth. Jacqueline Dubois steps in, walked in the second. Went one for three with an RBI single in game one. And strike one to Dubois from Maddox. Dresden Maddox, the freshman from Kennesaw, Georgia. Jacqueline Dubois, the freshman from Mount Vernon, New Hampshire. Long strike, 0 and 2. No surprise that Kiki Savriano has been so effective for UConn today as Jay Nelson will come out to talk to Dresden Maddox. Didn't like what he saw in that pitch. He does have Abby Houston in the bullpen if he wants to use her. The senior from New Egypt, New Jersey, also has Alyssa Landreth who went the complete game in game one. But back to what I was saying about Kiki Savriano. She went the full complete game nine hitter with four strikeouts for UConn in game one and has also 
given up just two runs over the first three innings of game two. So she's thrown 10 innings today as you get a look at Rutgers seventh year head coach, Jay Nelson. Former 10 year assistant at Seton Hall and longtime Mountain Lakes head coach, winning three state titles at the Group One school in North Jersey. Last state championship there coming in 1993. Ball one to Du Bois, who was behind 0 and 2. Two nines going up against each other. Maddox and Du Bois, the one two in the dirt. Good block by Madden. It was inconsequential, but good practice non nonetheless. Madden had an outstanding backhanded stab in game one. Saved a run. 2 2 with one out from Dresden Maddox. Ground ball towards second. Harabedian on. Throws the first low, but Durando's got it. First two away. Back to back ground outs by UConn to start the fourth. The third baseman. And Lexi Gifford, Lexi the nine hitter, steps in. Gifford. Grounded into a fielder's choice. In the second inning. Went 0 for 3 in game one. Hitless day for Gifford. And she'll square to bunt. Maddox picks it up, the throw to first. Not in time, Harabedian couldn't get there. It'll be an infield hit on the bunt for Gifford. Everything else executed well. And Harabedian just could not get that foot there in time. And Maddie Schiappa, 0 for 2 with a run here in game two, will come to the plate, the slap hitting leadoff hitter. We'll go for that exact process and foul it straight back. Schiappa singled in the first of game one, struck out twice. The third and fifth victims of Alyssa Landreth. That's a rough swing trying to come out of the box and a wry smile from Schiappa as she goes back to the box down 0-2. The 0-2 from Maddox, up and away. Schiappa came into today the second leading hitter on UConn. She's had a struggle, but 360 on the campaign. 31 hits and 86 at bats, few RBIs on base percentage of 360. And the breaking ball hits the outside corner. Dresden Maddox, a nifty pitch. And she strikes out her second of the day to end the top of the fourth. No runs for UConn, 2-2 two -two after three and a half on our vision. Pitcher for UConn, Kiki Savriano, will sit down after 10 innings of work today. We'll give you the final numbers on her in a moment. New catcher as well for UConn. Lauren Duggan will pitch. 
as Durando takes ball one. And the new catcher for UConn is Tori Thompson, the sophomore from South Windsor, Connecticut. She'll replace Jacqueline Dubois, who caught all 10 innings of Sabriano. Durando takes up and away, 2-0. and oh. Also now catching for UConn, number 21, Tori Thompson. Those are the official announcements of Thompson and Duggan. And that's strike one inside corner from Duggan. Savriano goes 10 innings today, gives up 13 hits, two earned runs, strikes out five, walks one in 10 innings. So excellent work from Kiki Savriano for UConn. Count even at two on Alexis Durando, who's 0 for 1 here in game two. 2-2 two to two is the score between Rutgers and UConn, bottom four of our doubleheader. UConn defeating Rutgers 4 to nothing in game one. That fouled away by Durando. Lauren Duggan, who was the designated player here in both games, on the year is 1-3 with a 2.85 ERA. It's her eighth appearance. She has started four games. Durando toward first, easy play for Grinnell, one away. Completing the line on Duggan. 27 innings pitched, 29 hits allowed. 18 strikeouts to 21 walks. So control has been an issue. The third baseman, Jordan Whitley. They have a couple other pitchers in the pen as well. Caitlin Callahan, Allison Ambler, but Dug in the main bullpen option as Jordan Whitley takes ball one away. Whitley's one for one in game two, a double and she scored. Came around to score on Jen Harabedian's RBI single. Duggan deals, ball low, two and oh. Infield plays in at second and third on Whitley. The slap variety. Duggan's 2-0 is upstairs. So while Savriano was a model of consistency when it came to not walking players over the last 10 innings, the seven of which she threw a complete game nine hitter in game one, and then the three here in game two, of which she gave up two runs, but walked only one over those 10 innings. That's strike one to Whitley. And that key, any time as a pitcher that you can avoid walks, those are unnecessary base runners, as any manager will tell you. Two to two, bottom four here between Rutgers and UConn in game two. Whitley lifts one deep to center. Going back is Silva, track wall, it's off the wall. Whitley's into second easily with a stand-up double as Silva went crashing into the wall. Two doubles in three innings for Jordan Whitley. Designated hitter. Ashley Alden. And Ashley Alden steps in with Whitley in scoring position and one out. Whitley didn't miss a home run by much as that one hit the wall. How about this stat for Jordan Whitley? Today and Wednesday, six hits. And she had 10 hits in the 25 games before that. Dug into Alden, it's low. Alden 0 for 0 with a sack bunt. Five hits for Rutgers in game two. They went nine without scoring a run in game one. Nine hits. Rutgers started with 25 straight road games to begin the year, came home, swept Hartford in the Wednesday doubleheader, 5-0, 7-0 before losing to UConn today in game one, four nothing. Now two, two, bottom four of game two. Off speed pitch, good one from Duggan. Alden swings through it. Dresden Maddox on the mound, despite giving up two unearned runs for Rutgers in the circle. Alden fouls that back. Maddox in the circle came into today owning the third best Big East opposing batting average of 188. And Alyssa Landreth who went complete for Rutgers in game one despite a rough sixth inning in which he gave up four runs, came in with a league seventh best 1.92 ERA. 
The one two from Duggan in the dirt. Thought about giving Whitley a look. Jay Nelson can get a little more creative here with Whitley on second. Alden up with 2-2. Two -two. Strong at bat from Ashley Alden. The sophomore from Ivyland, Pennsylvania and William Tennant High School. Continuing to serve those foul down the first baseline. Need a few more softballs after Alden sprayed them all over the complex here, the class of 53 complex. Alden was a consistent starter often at first base last year as a freshman. Some tough swings from Alden. A lot of pop on these. 41 starts a year ago, hitting 169 with a trio of home runs, but a 992 fielding percentage for the former first team Philly Inquirer player. The 2-2 from Duggan. Alden fouls that off. That'll sting. She'll walk it off. For Alden, a 176 hitter, three home runs, 10 RBIs. Between the two games today, 0 for 3 with a sack bunt. Homered on Wednesday against Hartford. Continues the at bat. Look from center field, a dug in and Alden again. Six straight foul balls and a smile toward Jay Nelson. Tells her, keep doing what you're doing. Working the new pitcher, Lauren Duggan, the sophomore from Norwood, Massachusetts, who had only swung a bat today in the designated player spot. And Alden straightened it out. Up the middle, base hit. Silva throws it in, it's cut off. And Rutgers will have first and third with one out. So Ashley Alden battled and battled and finally got a good enough piece to straighten it out up the middle. Runners on the corners, one out for Rutgers here in the fourth. And it's Jen Harabedian with a single, an RBI, and a stolen base today in game two. And ball one. Infield in at first and second as they figure Harabedian will want to hit the ball to the right side of the infield to try to score Whitley. And a 2-2 game in the fourth inning between Rutgers and UConn after the Huskies won 4-0 in game one. And ahead in the count, 2-0 is Harabedian. On deck is Ashley Bragg. Danny Breslauer here with you on our vision presented by AT&T via scarlandknights.com. I'll be back with Kyle Franco tomorrow night for Rutgers men's lacrosse at seven against Providence. Fouled off by Harabedian. Took a ricochet right back to the catcher Thompson. That is seven o'clock opening face-off. Speaking of face-offs, Rutgers possessing the third best face-off man in the country currently, that Joe Nardella. 66% of his face-offs this year. It's a big number. Harabedian takes strike two outside corner. Count even at two. President Maddox is going to go try to throw a few pitches in the bullpen so she doesn't get too cold in this long layover. The 2-2 from Duggan, off speed, Harabedian toward third. Looking back is Gifford, and throw across the diamonds in time. Alden moves up to second on the second out of the inning. And Ashley Bragg a chance with two runners in scoring position and two outs. Ashley Bragg. Rago for one on game two. Grounded back to Savriano in the second inning. 
Bragg in the five spot in game one, went one for three with a strikeout. Good block by the freshman Thompson. Check that, the sophomore Thompson. Catcher from South Windsor, Connecticut. Sophomore throwing to sophomore right now and dug in the pitcher and Thompson the catcher. The freshman Dubois had caught the senior Savriano. Bragg ahead 2-0. Casey Madden, the senior catcher on deck. Both pitchers went complete in game one. Savriano complete game nine hit shutout. Alyssa Lander with a complete game seven hitter giving up four runs all in the sixth inning after giving up just one hit through five innings in game one. Duggan behind three and oh. Have to figure Ashley Bragg with first base open has the take sign here in a 2-2 game bottom four. With Rutgers looking to salvage a Big East home opener doubleheader split. And it is ball four. Four pitch walk for Ashley Bragg. Loads the bases for Casey Madden, the senior catcher. Madden 0 for 1 in game two. Flew out to left field in the second inning to end the inning. Madden in game one went two for two with a pair of singles and a sack bunt. A look at the RU softball complex here in Piscataway. Bottom four of game two of our doubleheader. Scarlet Knights and Huskies tied at two. UConn took game one for nothing. Good block by the catcher Thompson. As for the first time today, we'll see UConn with a mound visit. Kiki Savriano was so consistent for 10 innings in giving up just two earned runs, and striking out five and walking one over those 10 innings for the Huskies. And that's the first time we see Tori Yamaguchi the third season assistant coach for UConn, an 07 grad of the University of Indiana, Indiana University, I should say. Sure, an unhappy camper after watching her Hoosiers lose in the Sweet 16 last night. Two runs on six hits, three errors for Rutgers. Two runs, three hits, no errors for UConn. Those three errors for RU, all coming in the first inning of game two. Neither side had an error in game one. Big spot here. Bases loaded, two outs for Casey Madden, and it's 2-0. and oh. The relief pitcher Duggan having some trouble finding the play. The 2-0, -oh. and it's in there, 2-1. and one. Well, If you want a veteran up, Good spot to have your second leadoff hitter, as they say, the nine hitter, Casey Madden, from Saratoga Springs High School in upstate New York. The two one from Duggan, fouled straight back, and it's two and two. Jay Nelson applauding, saying he liked the effort on the cut. Long time Big East pedigree at both Seton Hall and Rutgers. 2-2 two -two with two outs. It's in the dirt. Skipping rope is Madden. And it will be a payoff pitch with the merry-go-round started. Bases loaded. Full count, two outs. Bragg on first. Alden second. Whitley third. Duggan dealing to Madden. Madden flips it towards second, making a running play as due close. So after all that, the Scarlet Knights get two hits and a walk, but no one scores. We played four here in game two. UConn two, Rutgers two on our vision, presented by AT&T.
Putting on for Utah. The shortstop, Emily O'Donnell. 2, 3, and 4 for UConn here in the top of the fifth. Welcome back to Piscataway and the RU Softball Complex, the Livingston campus of the State University of New Jersey. Dresden Maddox gave up only two first inning unearned runs. And RU and UConn tied at two's top five of game two of this doubleheader. O'Donnell one for two in game two, fouls that away to start the fifth. O'Donnell also went two for three in game one scoring the officially game-winning run in a 4-0 win. Now behind 0-2. O'Donnell, a year ago as a freshman, started all 48 games at shortstop, had a team-high 39 runs scored, and was second on the team in slugging percentage, hits, RBIs, and home runs. Behind in the count, 1-2. and two. It's a good stat balance to have out of your number two hitter. Tasked with moving over runners, being comfortable in the batter's box. Dresden Maddox is one, two, an all speed pitch. Chopper towards Bragg. She's been great today. Across the diamond, scoop by Durando, one down. First time that Durando has had to bail out an infielder here. But Bragg, who has been excellent with the glove work, the center fielder. Gets another put out. Kim Silva. Kim Silva, one of the best hitters in the Big East Conference, steps in. 388 average coming into today. 0 for 1 here in game two. Drives one to left. Howard back to the wall. It's off the wall. Silva rounds first. We'll go for two. The throw to second is not in time. Silva in standing up with a double. Well, there's a little bit of that pop right we spoke fielder. of in the open. Arissa Gutchis. Silva went 0 for 4 in game one and had been 0 for 5 on the day after coming in 388. That her first hit and her 10th double of the year. Marissa Gutches, who has an RBI single already today, will take ball one high. Dresden Maddox, her first real jam since the third inning. Worked out of trouble in the first after giving up two unearned runs. Freshman from Georgia, upstairs 2-0. I know many family members and friends of these Scarlet from out of area tuned into our vision presented by AT&T today. Thanks so much for joining us. Danny Breslauer here with you as Abby Houston goes to the pen to warm up for Rutgers. Gutches takes a strike at the knees, 2-1. Gutches 1 for 2 with an RBI in game 2. Went 0 for 3 with a walk in game one. Two one. Popped up. Chance here for Durando. Makes the catch to retire the NFCA All-American Scholar Athlete, Marissa Gutches. And bring up Audrey Grinnell, first baseman. Audrey Grinnell. Grinnell worked a tough walk in the third, struck out in the first. Are you out hitting UConn again? 6-4, out hit UConn 9-7 in a 4-0 loss in game one. Ball one for Maddox, two outs in the, four, in the fifth, excuse me, 2-2 two -two game. Not often you see a team get nine hits, not score. It was a tough go for Rutgers in game one in terms of clutch hitting. 1-0 for Maddox, Grinnell swings over it. Dresden Maddox in her freshman campaign has been impressive. ERA won't change right now because of those two unearned runs. She's five and one on the year, a 2.38 ERA. Has completed five, four of her seven starts and now ahead one and two. The 30th year head coach Karen Mullins giving encouragement to Grinnell, her five hitter. Eight hundred and thirty-five wins coming into today in the career of Karen Mullins, but she'll watch Grinnell go down looking. The third strikeout of game two for Dresden Maddox as UConn goes down despite a one-out double from Silva. We have played four and a half. 
UConn 2, Rutgers 2 on ScarlinKnights.com. Some power to start the bottom of the fifth for Rutgers as they'll turn the lineup card over. One, two, and three, Lauren Williams, Chandler Howard, Jackie Bates. That the lineup in the outfield that has started all 29 games for Rutgers this year and they are one, two, and three in the lineup. Williams one for two with a home run. She let off the first inning with a deep fly to left center field for Rutgers, her fifth of the year. Showed bunt, pulled back one and up. Oh. Williams leading Rutgers in many statistical categories. Including up there in the top 10 in Big East categories as well. And Williams in a center field base hit. Nearly 350 hitter coming into today. And has Rutgers with a leadoff base runner in the fifth. Seven inning regulation softball game. Chandler Howard. And Will J. Nelson, back to your camera there, go to small ball. He has a good chance here with a lefty slap hitter up. Howard 0 for 2 with two flyouts to left in game two. Williams, false break, ball one high. Lauren Williams also has a stolen base propensity. Very solid in that category. Eight for 10 on the year. But two and oh, Duggan not giving in to Howard. Lauren Williams is in fact seventh in stolen base attempts in the Big East. Seventh in stolen bases. Seventh in runs and eighth in hits. And no surprise that Chandler Howard is ahead 3-0. She is seventh in the Big East with 14 walks. Works out well. The 3-0 to Howard. Bottom five, 2-2 between Rutgers and UConn. Game two of the doubleheader. Huskies took game one 4 nothing. All four runs coming in the sixth inning. And that one bobbled, it's ball four. This throw will mean nothing. Williams is safe anyway. So it's a walk, first and second, nobody out, Scarlet Knights in business. And Karen Mullins will take the long walk out to talk to Lauren Duggan with first and second, nobody out for Jackie Bates. There is the 30th year head coach. Question is, will she take the ball from Duggan? She has two more pitchers that she has used this year in the pen. Kiki Savriano has already thrown 10 innings today. Have to figure she won't go anymore, and they will go to the pen. Allison Ambler will be the pitcher for UConn. When we come back, we'll take a quick break in the pitching change and return to you with stats on Allison Ambler after this on Our Vision, presented by AT&T.
UConn in a jam, and they'll turn to Allison Ambler, the freshman from Walla Walla, Washington. That's not a joke. Walla Walla High School in Walla Walla, Washington. That is where Ambler comes from. The two and four, 4.64 4 ERA on the year. Bates in the left field. It's a base hit. Williams will turn third and score. RBI single for Jackie Bates, and Rutgers leads 3-2. Well, Bates was not waiting. Alexis Durando. As Howard moves on to second on the RBI single by Jackie Bates to bring up Alexis Durando. Excellent work by Bates, who picks up RBI number 17 on the year. That will lead Rutgers. Durando to bunt. Straight back to the screen. 0-1. Three runs on eight hits and three errors for the Scarlet Knights, which take the lead now in the bottom of the fifth. UConn, two runs, four hits, no errors. After winning game one, UConn four to nothing. Rutgers looking for a Big East home opener, doubleheader split. Durando behind 0-2. The veteran first baseman, junior out of Oakland, New Jersey, and Immaculate Heart Academy. 0 for 2 in game 2 with a strikeout and a ground out. Stellar 2 for 3 with a pair of singles in game 1. Ambler deals, Durando pop fly. Deep second, Duclos backs up and makes the catch for the first out. The way Dresden Maddox has thrown so far today. One run may be enough, but Rutgers would love insurance. Maddox relinquishing only two first inning unearned runs. Jordan Whitley, a pair of doubles in game two, steps in. Two for two and a line drive base hit right field. Coming up with it is Gutchess. She'll throw to the plate. It's wide of the plate, the slide in time from Howard. Whitley to second in time. A single for Whitley, moves to second on the throw and an RBI for Jordan Whitley to give Rutgers a 4-2 lead. Aggressive base running from Chandler Howard, waved home by Jay Nelson. Bates on to third. Give Whitley three hits in three at bats. And an RBI. And Ashley Alden comes up now with second and third and one out in a 4-2 game in the fifth. I continue to be amazed by this stat. Jordan Whitley coming into the doubleheader on Wednesday against Hartford had 10 hits in 25 games. As Alden swings over a pitch for strike one. 10 hits in 25 games coming into that doubleheader, Whitley. Gets four hits in that doubleheader, three today. So seven in the last four games after 10 over 25. Alden fouls that away 0-2. Jordan Whitley on fire. Single and two doubles today. Alden one for one with a single and a sack bunt. Had an hour long at bat <laughs> last inning. Fouling off seven straight. Behind one and two. Eventually got one to drive up the middle for a base hit, but was stranded at second. After Casey Madden flew out with the bases loaded. The one two with one out. And Alden strikes out on an off speed pitch from Ambler. First strikeout for the freshman Allison Ambler. The second baseman. Jenny Harabedian. And Jenny Harabedian steps in. Harabedian, one for two. RBI single in the second, grounded out in the fourth. And Harabedian swinging off the glove of a diving Gifford and into left field. Two runners will score as Bates and Whitley are in. And Rutgers lead 6-2. Harabedian with three RBIs on the day now on Rutgers' 10th hit. Ashley and UConn will meet on the mound to 
try to figure things out. So Whitley and Bates scoring. And now Ashley Bragg, the eight hitter, steps in 0 for 1. Six runs, 10 hits, three hours for Rutgers, all in the first inning. Two runs, four hits for UConn, and it's 6 to 2 RU with a four spot in the fifth. Bragg ahead 1 and 0. UConn to three pitchers here in game two Kiki Savriano, Lauren Duggan, Allison Ambler. After Savriano went complete in game one. Dresden Maddox has thrown all five innings for Rutgers in game two after Alyssa Landreth won complete in game one. Bragg pops it up. First baseman dropped in in fair territory. Grinnell, it is a fair ball on the E3 Bragg will reach. And the inning continues for Rutgers as they will bat around. Casey Madden comes to the plate as the ninth hitter of the inning. The leadoff hitter, Lauren Williams, got it started as you get a look at the first baseman, Grinnell, who had a tough play coming in. A four spot for Rutgers in the fifth. Madden fouls it back. Just like UConn had a four spot in the sixth of game one, but that was all the scoring in the entire game. Off five UConn hits, following Alyssa Landreth going five innings of one hit shutout ball. Madden ahead 2-0, and oh, and a chance to load the bases for Rutgers' best power hitter, Lauren Williams. By the way, she'd be the game winning run via eight run rule. 3-0. and oh. Rutgers a walk and a grand slam away from out of nowhere executing the eight run rule. Madden fouls it away. Two and two. Dresden Maddox trying to stay warm near the Rutgers dugout. Tough to do. She's been there for about 25 minutes during this fifth inning. Rutgers has four across in it. Madden down the line foul. Rutgers with four hits, a walk, and a UConn error in this fifth inning of which they push four across. There's a great look at your scoreboard. Four in the bottom of the frame as Madden drives it to left. If it stays fair, it's gone. It's just foul. It cleared the wall. Casey Madden, who is in fact homerless this year, nearly. 2-2, two, two, two outs, two runners on bottom five. Rutgers up 6-2 in game two, and it's full count. UConn won game one, four nothing. Using five hits and four runs in the sixth, and a Kiki Savriano complete game. And Matt into the gap in right center field, it's there. Rutgers should clear the bases with this. Harabedian and Bragg score, and it's 8-2 on the two RBI double by Casey Madden. And an eruption by the Scarlet Knights in the fifth. The right fielder, Lauren Williams. Bragg scored from first, Harabedian from second. As RU bats around, and Lauren Williams, who started things with a single, Pinch running on second base, number three, Stephanie Flang. And for the second game in a row, Stephanie Wong will pinch run for Casey Madden. And she'll do so with Lauren Williams serving as the game winning run. With a home run, she'd end it. With the eight run rule, 
coming after five innings and Rutgers up six, eight to two. Allison Ambler has been roughed up a bit here in this inning and Williams down the line, it's a fair ball. Scoring is Wong easily. Williams to second and Rutgers up seven. The left fielder, Chandler Howard. And Karen Mullins has seen all she's wanted from Allison Ambler. It's been a tough, tough fifth inning for Allison Ambler who has hit around the field. And UConn will go to the final arm they have. That's Caitlin Callahan. We'll give you the details on her right after this. Rutgers, seven runs in in the bottom of the fifth to break a 2-2 tie. It's 9-2 Scarlet Knights with Chandler Howard up and two outs on our vision. UConn has used all four pitchers they have on the team. The junior from Queensbury, New York, Caitlin Callahan, will do the honors as the fourth, with Rutgers having seven runs in in the bottom of the fifth. Callahan, 0-1 on the year, a 3.5 ERA. This is just her sixth appearance. In 12 innings, she's given up 13 hits, struck out nine, walked 10. It was a 2-2 game after four and a half. And then Rutgers broke it open with seven in the bottom of this fifth inning after losing game one of the doubleheader, four nothing. Howard takes strike one outside corner from Callahan. Remember by eight run rule, if Rutgers gets one more across, they'd end the game. Lauren Williams is currently on second with Chandler Howard up. Rutgers has batted around. This is the 11th batter of the inning as Howard takes ball one outside. Howard walked and scored in the fifth, flew out twice in the first and the third. And went one for three with a single in game one. Callahan deals outside. Remember, Rutgers men's lacrosse against Providence live on our vision tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Both teams searching for their first Big East wins. A 2-1 from Callahan. Howard takes outside. And then our baseball slate starts next Friday and Saturday. Rutgers and Seton Hall, Friday at 3, Saturday at 1. We'll have both of those games. Rob Smorrell, the Rutgers ace, will go on Friday, presumably. After his outstanding outing against Villanova, he has a one ERA over the last 27 innings of work. And then Rutgers women's lacrosse next Sunday against Syracuse. They are eight and two, one and one in Big East play. Howard takes strike two, the count is full. Kiki Savriano through 10 innings, seven in game one, three in game two for UConn, but then it's been Lauren Duggan, Allison Ambler, and Caitlin Callahan since that haven't been able to stymie the Rutgers offense the way Savriano did. Landra threw seven for Rutgers in game one, Maddox has gone five for RU in game two, Howard fouls that back. Wind picking up a little bit here at the RU Softball Complex. The sophomore outfielder from Delaware, Chandler Howard with a chance to end it via eight run rule. 3-2, fouled away right toward the Rutgers batting cage. Two runs in the first, both unearned for UConn. Rutgers a picket fence in the first and second and then seven in the fifth. 
And Howard takes ball four. Passing the buck to Jackie Bates for her second at bat of the inning. She's two for three here in game two. Had an RBI single earlier on this inning. It was the first RBI of the inning. Since then, Whitley had an RBI single. Harabedian had a two RBI single. Madden had a two RBI double. And that shot in the gap, Bates deep, and it is off the wall. Scoring to end the game will be Lauren Williams as Jackie Bates hits an RBI single for the second time this inning. And Lauren Williams crosses to give Rutgers a 10 to two shortened five inning win. Rutgers and UConn split the doubleheader here today at the RU Softball Complex as RU gets 13 hits in game two. Thank you to send out to our entire R Vision crew. On behalf of producer director Colin Osborne, I'm Danny Breslauer saying good evening from Piscataway. Rutgers a 10 2 winner in game two after a 4 0 loss in game one. Signing off on R Vision presented by ATT. Be sure to head on out.